and something super exciting that's going to be high value for everyone here, uh, no matter what stage your website is in, is uh, today's tip of the week. And today's tip of the week is something that uh, we've been thinking about for a few weeks, and we think right now is a great time uh, to present on this. We've had some great tip of the week segments in the previous webinars, and this one is going to help you uh, get off the hamster wheel and continuously grow your website. And I want to bring Pat in on this mainly because he had a lot of good tips that contributed to this tip of the week. So Pat, can you tell us a little bit about um, what a hamster wheel is and how it could uh, stunt a website's growth or, or hinder a website's growth? Absolutely. So so a hamster, heel of, a hamster wheel, of course, as we all know, it just spins round and round. And regardless of how fast you run and how hard you try, you don't make any progress. You burn a lot of calories along the way, uh, but in terms of progress and, and getting further down the journey of growing a business, growing a website, um, you've made almost no progress at all. So the idea here is to identify, we're going to help you identify if you're even stuck in the hamster wheel. A lot of times when I'm doing consultation calls or I'm, I'm speaking with people about their businesses, they don't realize that they've actually been stuck at what they're doing for the past six months, the past year, and they haven't done anything to get off the hamster wheel, and they're just trying to run faster. And running faster is not a good technique for getting off of it. Um, yeah, and, and it could be detrimental to not yourself, to your organization. Um, you'll start getting frustrated at you know, maybe colleagues or the platform you're using um, when really – the goal here is to get off the hamster wheel and continuously do different things that help propel the business forward rather than focusing on one task um, and one task alone. That's correct. You, you'll lose motivation eventually if you don't take action and, and do something to switch things up a little bit. And that's what I'm excited about the presentation as well is hopefully we'll help some people on this webinar identify whether they're on a hamster wheel and they're stuck and more importantly, uh, what they can do to get, get off of it. Absolutely. And, and guys, don't worry. There will be a replay of this webinar on our website um, soon. Uh, but if you want to take some notes, these are the five proven pillars to continuously grow your website over time from day one, even if you've been in business and online for five years. Uh, and the key here is with these five steps is to continuously cycle through these steps and again, not get stuck on the hamster wheel in one of these areas. Uh, Pat, can you just share with us uh, one through five real quickly and which one you feel is the most important uh, for, for a business? Sure thing. And, and like Jason just said, the, the key is not to spend a long time in any one of these areas. It's good to define a maximum amount of time that you'll spend in each one. Uh, for example, perhaps one week per section before you go and repeat the cycle. This is a cycle, meaning that once you've completed the entire cycle, you want to restart it up again um, and just identifying a different need and building a system around it. Uh, so what you'll want to do is you'll want to identify what is it that your website is helping resolve for your end users, for the members, for the public. Uh, then you're going to want to build some content around that. We'll give you some ideas on the type of supporting content you'd want to build on that. It's much easier to have these two uh, items figured out before you jump into the third step, which is designing an easy-to-use web website. Uh, unfortunately, most of the time I work with people, they start at step three and they don't spend enough time at step one and step two. And then they're kind of, uh, they get stuck obviously because they're missing the, the, the marketing assets that you'd be required to get to step four and step five. So they just are in limbo in step three forever and ever uh, tweaking and designing and customizing their websites. Uh, and then of course, uh, following up your members and subscribers. We touched on that in the past in a couple of other webinars, but we give you a little bit more information on that. And then most importantly, restarting that cycle. And then for me, the most important one um, is, without a doubt, the first step, um, finding a, a need and, and filling it. Yeah, I have to agree. And again, I want to also reiterate, a lot of people start with step three. Uh, when I was in university and in college and I had to write an essay on a topic, um, you know, I'd outline what I was going to write about. And then when it came time to actually put the sentences and paragraphs together, the essay essentially wrote itself. So steps one and two is really outlining 
um, what your unique selling proper proposition is, what your website's about, and step three will basically write itself, designing your website, because you're just going to fill in the blanks um, with all the copy that you've uh, and content that you've created beforehand. All right, let's move into uh, what it means to find a need and, and fill it. So why is this the most important step, Pat? Why are we putting an emphasis on this one? Uh, because if, if there's no if there's no purpose to your website, if you can't identify why someone should join, it's going to be very difficult for you to sell somebody on why they should join, regardless of it being a membership that I pay for or just being a general user that would interact with your content and members. If you can't do a good job of identifying something your website does for your end users, uh, they're definitely not going to connect those dots for you. Okay. Um, yeah, and I, I notice a lot of people enter in niches that they used to work in or they currently work in. So it's good that you know um, some of the pain points as a professional who might be working uh, in your industry. And what's most helpful is if you can find out what frustrates you and aim to solve that problem. Maybe there's another solutions provider out there, but they're they're missing the they're they're missing something in their workflow and they're not really providing a good service to the industry professionals and that's maybe something that frustrates you and, and the problem that you want to solve uh, and that's where you can find out what you can do to make that process better and provide a better value to the professionals who would be joining your website. That's correct. And, and I've even worked with people before. They've taken an interesting approach about it. Oftentimes people are thinking, what frustrates me? I'm a vendor. What frustrates me? I'm going to make a website to help make my job easier, right? Because those will be my members. And I've had other people take the opposite approach and say, what frustrates my customers about choosing vendors? Because I'm a vendor. I know the pains that they go through. And they'll build an entire website based around the end user, their customers, because they know how difficult it is for their customers to choose the right vendor. And they're saying, hey, I'm an industry expert. I know the information you need to know. I'm going to build a website and I'm going to make it super easy and super useful for people to come to my site to choose the vendor in X industry, in X niche. So you can also help tackle what frustrates your customers and build around that first. Because again, if you're, if your end users, if the customers come to your site, your members will be happy to join. And tell us a little bit about what number four is and how, um, what it has to do with repeating this cycle over and over again, going through steps one through five of the five pillars. Uh, you, you got it. And, and maybe what we can do just to really simplify it, let's go really basic. Can you go to the demo bootstrap all in one uh, template that you have uh, to kind of break it down? Uh, and, and this is something that everybody, because again, I'm, I, we could overcomplicate the explanation. I'm going to simplify it for everybody. Let's say this is the end product. I would like to eventually have a directory that will have events and coupons and jobs and galleries and classifieds and properties and articles and members only content, so on and so forth. It looks great. Every time you launch any one of these types of features, you're basically choosing one of these cycles that we're talking about. Meaning, if you're going to allow the feature events to be published on your directory, it means that you need to be solving a problem. And maybe the problem that you're solving is allowing businesses that don't have big marketing dollars to advertise in your local directory. Perhaps I have a directory in a sm my hometown, Thunder Bay, Ontario, and I realize that, you know what, there's the, the independent theater scene, there's really nowhere for them to advertise, there's no sites that cater to them, there's just the big newspaper. So what my I'm going to start off, and that's the first need that I'm going to fill. I'm going to start small, and I'm going to I'm going to have marketing materials filled around that. I'm going to only launch the events, and I'm going to start building landing pages only for events, barely people that have a smaller budget, and introducing it as an exciting new way to promote your local event. And I'm going to try to gain traction, and that's going to be it. I'm going to deactivate properties. I'm going to deactivate classifieds. I'm not going to launch the blog articles for members. I'm going to basically remove all the other features, and I'm going to launch with one and I'm going to make the content on my website, which we're kind of jumping into step two, but I'm going to make the content on my website all about that need that I'm filling. Uh, since it is small, 
and it has one single purpose, my content's going to be on point and it's going to be easier for me to complete that second step of the cycle, which is to have enough marketing assets to hopefully uh, get people to sign up and interact with my website. And when we're done this cycle that we're going over, then at that point, you'll look at that second need. And that second need could be a brilliant directory's feature, like classifies. It could be a... Uh, or it could be an additional feature on top of events. Perhaps you'll release recurring events. Uh, perhaps you're going to say, hey, now we're also doing movies. Um, that'll be up for you to, to define what that second step is. But the idea is to slowly build upon each need that you help resolve. I think in the previous webinar, we, we talked a lot about simplifying uh, your website's purpose and mission so that you can be really strong in one category and then add more over time. So that's where this comes in. When you recycle through the steps and you come back to step one, uh, you can consider other things that you want to release on your site and other problems uh, that you want to solve. And that brings us to step two. Once you've figured out the first thing that you want to hone in on, um, you want to write copy that sells. So copy is the content that people are going to read uh, on your site. So tell us a little bit about the different types of copy and why it's they're important uh, to kind of explaining the why and how of your website. Sure thing. And and again, if I define something simple, and, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna run with this. I, I, I didn't plan for, it, but I'll run with the idea of the, the, I have a local directory, and I want to make it easy for smaller uh, organizations to promote their events, some that don't have a lot of good content. So now when I come down to this second step and I write about my mission and my vision and my about website, I can I have an idea of who my end user is, who why people would want to support my directory, support the arts, help talent uh, be found, and help people that don't have a big budget uh, market their their services, and hopefully they can uh, grow their 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 performances, get more people to attend, and so on and so forth. By having a clear a first step, I can start writing about that. If I am the a directory that hasn't even landed a member, and I'm saying I'm going to be the, the, the one shop, one size fits all directory for Thunder Bay, where you're going to, anything you're looking for, you're going to be able to find it. What I'm doing is I'm delivering a promise I'm never going to be able to deliver. I'm basically pitching the end product, which is going to take me years to develop, and making that what my about and my mission statement is. And there's going to be a disconnect from my end users, and I'll be in that hamster wheel because I'm never going to be able to get get the site point where it can catch up to the content I'm creating. If that does that make any sense, Jason? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, and again, it just goes back to simplifying what you're offering to people. And the simpler the the offering, the easier your job is, and the easier it is for potential members and subscribers to understand what you're trying to do, uh, and what your mission is all about. Um, and so the. So, your, so so, so, so at this point, Jason, what I would do next then is I would go and find uh, somebody that has a local theater, maybe a university, uh, that they're trying to to, put, to put, get their students to get more exposure. And I'll tell them, hey, uh, I know you need help with marketing. Can I create a profile for you? I'm going to help you market your events. I'm going to help get students to come on board. And what I'd like in return is I'd like a testimonial from your from your organization. And if you don't mind, I'd love to make a case study out of it um, and start uh, start leveraging that. And there's a good chance that that university would say, yeah, that sounds great. That's a fair exchange. Now I have a partner. I have brand exposure. Um, and I have somebody that's that's becoming a champion of my brand. They'll never forget that I came in and I tried to help them solve a problem. They're probably going to become a champion of my brand. When I want to write a compelling blog article, well, that those articles are going to relate around the needs for supporting our local talent, uh, supporting local arts, uh, helping uh, students uh, get more exposure, and the importance of really arts and the community. So I could make all the content around that. Again, this is becoming easy. I'm coming up with ideas quickly uh, because we defined what we're, our need is going to be in step one. Uh, and then when we're doing lead magnets and we're doing free resources, um, these can be either um, download this guide to the summer guide of the theater plays in Thunder Bay, or it can maybe be a lead magnet for the peop for my members that would like to add their events to my site, which could be five ways to market uh, your play without spending a dollar. Uh, and I can have different types of lead magnets. Again, because we have a simple vision, 
we have a simple need that we're filling, it's much, much easier for me to come up with good specific ideas for content that we can then leverage in the third step when we're actually working on our website. Exactly. And I want to give everyone a free gift here. We, we did a webinar in the past um, on a specific topic. Let me share that link with everyone in the chat. Uh, so we have our, our workshop videos on our BD site under the community tab. Um, but we also have premium workshops that are on specific topics. And let me find the, here it is, creating awesome content to boost uh, website traffic. Uh, let me just grab this link here and share it with everyone. Uh, this comes with the webinar slides and it's eight different uh, chapters and it talks about exactly what we're talking about here. Here's uh, one on uh, creating your about slash mission page. So I think everyone sh on the webinar, if you're interested, uh, in figuring out how to come up with compelling content that sells, uh, you should watch this webinar. And let me just type this link into the chat here. Okay, you guys should all have that um, now uh, there. Okay, great. So after you've come up with how you're going to pitch the product uh, to people, basically pitch your website to potential subscribers and, and members, now you can create your website. Um, so this is actually the step that most people get stuck on and it's usually the step that most people start with first um, so that they really are, are getting stuck on the hamster wheel on this step and on this slide we've included more uh, don'ts than than do's but can you share with us some of the pitfalls maybe not even a little bit more beyond this slide pat that that people fall into with designing and configuring and setting up their website Sure, and, and I think probably because I have so much experience helping people uh, with customizations in the Brilliant Directories marketplace, uh, what I find oftentimes is, is massive dollars invested in ideas that were decided upon by one or two individuals working on the project, uh, thinking this would be a good idea to develop without having any feedback from members, without ever even signing up a single member. Uh, and it's, it's it can be really heartbreaking to, to see somebody invest so much time and so many resources build a website and never really investing in seeing if it's a, if there's a good proof of concept if people are interested if the demographic they're going after are, are even comfortable you signing up for directories if they're if it's if it's a good idea for them to go, if there's too much competition if there's something similar that's already out there and and Basically, that's my personal experience is the sooner you could do step one and two and then create easy landing pages and start driving traffic to those landing pages and getting good at getting people to sign up, then when you invest in those customizations, you know you're going to get a return on those. Um, the skill set that's the most important to get good at when you're launching an online directory is driving traffic to your website and getting conversions. A conversion is getting somebody to sign up for a newsletter, getting somebody to submit a lead form, getting somebody to sign up for a free trial, to sign up for basically anything that exchanges an email for something in return. That's what that's what's called a conversion. And, and if you it, people get stuck in the hamster wheel because they're not they're not perfecting that skill set, and then you lose the motivation because if all you're doing is investing money on development and customizations, then it's not leading to generating revenue. It's not leading to your database growing. Um, eventually what happens is you lose that motivation and you just stop working on your project when, in my opinion, you've never even given your project a chance. If you haven't run at least one AdWords campaign to a landing page and you've pulled the plug on your project, it's, to my opinion, you've, you haven't even literally given yourself one opportunity to succeed. You know, and, that, and that's a really interesting point because again I think most people get stuck in this step I'm curious to know um, how many of you by a show of hands feel that you might be stuck in this step and what we've done in previous webinars is we've kind of taken a look at your site and again the number one thing we can do is remove things from your website to make uh, the focus of your site a lot clearer um, and you're eliminating a lot of work that you're creating for yourself because if again if you have lots of sections to your site like jobs and coupons you're creating more work for yourself having to fill in those pages so potentially on your the first iteration of your site or whatever stage your website is in you could look at things to remove so that you can be stronger in other areas of, of your site um, so let's just see if anyone has their hands raised uh, I see BJ here uh, BJ how you doing today Oh, hi, how are you? 
Pretty good, pretty good. Is this your first webinar with us? First webinar, absolutely. Awesome. Well, well, thank you for joining us. Where are you calling in from? Uh, a city called Texarkana um, on the Texas-Arkansas border. Okay, okay, great. Um, yeah, so what stage is your website, and do you feel like you're stuck in yeah, this com- stage? Uh, well, I guess I'm not as stuck as I'm just completely brand new, and I don't know where to start. <laughs> but uh, um, but uh, um, I just don't know what niche to follow. I, I agree with you on, on – that you need to focus on something. And I was thinking on uh, maybe business listings and events. Okay. And do you, are you looking to target a specific industry or a, a specific town or city? Um, yeah, probably just a small community within uh, Texarkana called Liberty Ilo. That's perfect. When you focus on a more specific niche, when you approach the businesses or whoever are the potential members of your site, the more specific your site is, the more relatable it is to, to those potential members. And you could really write a strong mission statement about how you're trying to empower the local businesses and establishments in your area. And having that strong, very specific mission statement is going to make your job a lot easier when you're trying to get people to join and subscribe uh, to your website. Um, so having events and maybe a, a preferred business directory um, or a, a local shopping guide uh, would be a great place to start uh, for your first directory. Oh, great. Well, thank you very much, and I'm enjoying the webinar. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, BJ. All right. That's uh, looking for a way to get started. looks like he's got a good mindset. Um, hopefully, this webinar will help keeping the idea simple and only focusing on a, a few pieces of, of the site to launch first. Let's see if there's anyone else that's got their hand raised here. Uh, we see a Michelle, but it shows she's offline, so uh, we'll move on. Uh, with the presentation. I wanted to go back actually one slide, Pat, if, if it's okay. I was curious to know, again, by, by a show of hands, if anyone is using testimonials on their site um, or anyone that's actually written uh, a more concrete mission or about uh, page for their site. And maybe we could take a look at some examples. Uh, if anyone wants to use the raise your hand feature here, all right, we've got a couple people here. Um, Esther, our good friend Esther, how are you today? Hey, how are you? Awesome. Esther was the Showcase My Website winner uh, last webinar, correct? Yes. Awesome. Uh, your website was, uh, again, also serving a local area in Florida, correct? Yeah, the Tampa Bay region. The Tampa Bay region. You've done a phenomenal job with your site. And are you using... Um, like having a strong mission page not, or testimonials on your site? Um, I'm not doing testimonials yet, but I do have a, a pretty strong about us page. Do you mind if we check it out together? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay, what was the name of your site again? Uh, localshopswan.com. Localshopswan, there it is right there. Got it saved from last time. All right, so, oh yeah, you did a great job on your site, lowering the image sizes and everything. Uh, so where would be uh, your about page? Why local? Um, that, that would be about. Okay. I also like that you have a why local tab there. All right. This is great. Here's what we do. Uh, you have a picture of your team and maybe some of the local businesses here. You have yeah, some st- of our more active members. You have your story here about you know how you got started. This is great. We work with businesses, artists, nonprofits. This is phenomenal. People want to connect to a story rather than just knowing how a website works, like search, find, and connect. That's good to start, but you want to expand on that. And I love the word that you used, involved, because in, people want to be part of a community. And they want to be feel like they're part of a movement. So using the word involved here is mm-hmm. very powerful, Esther, um, in what you've what you've done here. Um, so it's not just a directory of businesses. It's it, this is a movement to really help the local community. And um, you've, you're promoting some signature events here. And how to how to keep in touch, joining us, our network. So it's some really good information here. Um, And then you have news release. So this really shows me that you're established, you're credible, number one. That's another thing is establishing credibility. 
um, and that you're, you have a pulse. I love seeing the smiley faces at the top of the page. It makes it's very welcoming. Um, so you've done a lot of good things here. You've established authority, credibility, um, likability with the smiles, and you're showing that your website has a pulse. And it's nothing more complicated than a page with, um, you know, there's there's a lot of text here, but you've broken it up nicely between bullet points, nice fat titles here, you know, bold titles, and a nice image at the top. So I think you've done a really good job here, Esther. Do you think should add testimonials here, or...? Should they be somewhere else? Um, you could them? add you could add testimonials on maybe on the sidebars just to fill some of the white space. Um, the white space isn't a terrible thing, um, but maybe in between the sections you can add horizontal testimonials um, and things like that. But um, I think overall it's good. Um, again, I'm saying there's a lot of text, but I think you've done a good job breaking it up into simple paragraphs, so it's not too overwhelming. Um, and again, it's your mission page, so it should be more about text and, and things like that. I think your titles are the key here, and you've done a good job with the titles. I feel okay, like I feel you. like you're really in touch with the with the community with this page. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing your site with us yet again, Esther. Let's see if there's anyone else here. Uh, Melanie, uh, Melanie, I've unmuted your mic. How you doing? Hi. Good. Good. Um, you're just talking about. Um, being stuck and I feel like my site might be too busy you're saying you know keep it simple um, sure let's so I'm kind of yeah raising would, my hand do you mind <laughs> you mind sharing your site we could take a quick look at it maybe Pat has some tips to kind of simplify the focus sure it's a you me mine.com so I've done a lot of work to it but I'm almost wondering if I did too much to it Okay. Um, yeah, I was, I was just saying, I, I remember uh, you were on the previous webinars. It's to find uh, egg donors and surrogates um, and a directory of them. Um, my, my first, uh, um, at first glance, it, it looks nice. It doesn't look too complicated. Um, I might, you might want to just aesthetically maybe increase the font size here or make it bolder. Um, this is your main title here, and it's the same size as your subtitle down here. Um, okay. Again, I don't think the site is too busy. It's very straightforward. So, uh, you know, it looks like you worked with a, a designer on this. Um, I would just increase the font size, maybe even make it uh, bold. Let's just see. Um, just something to make it stand out, stand out more. I think, I think it may be paused. I'm not sure. Just, oh. uh, I yes, I was possible. paused. Sorry about that. All right, thank you. So let's go back one minute, guys. So this is her site. Um, it's a site to find egg donors and, and surrogates. And what I was saying is I think it's very simple. Um, you can search surrogates or search egg donors. I was recommending making the title a little easier to read. It's, it's a little faint behind the white, white font against the white grayish background. So you might want to find a way to make this stand out a bit more because it is the main title of your site. Um, now, what are events? If I'm looking for an egg donor, what are what's an event I would go to? There are fertility events, so they're for either people that are looking um, for egg donors or surrogates, or their um, fertility um, doctors or okay. people in the industry as well. In that case, I would recommend putting the uh, keyword in there: fertility events. Um, mm -hmm. Events is just very, it's a little vague. Um, it's also good for search engines. It's another place to put a keyword. And eventually, I can't imagine too many people are advertising for fertility events. Your site will start ranking for that keyword phrase over time if you utilize it uh, throughout your site. So if you click on events, um, it should say upcoming fertility events uh, instead of just upcoming events. So that will help you out a bit there. And then what's the difference between resource directory and articles? Um, the resource directory is actually my directory. Um, so it's, you click on that, it's the directory part of my site. Okay. And, and then what, what are the, where do these search surrogates and search egg donors go to? Is that part of um, the resource directory? Nope. When you click, that's, that's what I'm wondering is a little confusing too. When you click on that, it asks them to sign up. So um, there's three membership types, and one of them, the intended parent, um, is the search. Okay. It, it allows them to search. Um, the other two are free. Um, and how is this page working for you? Are you seeing a lot? It's kind of, of 
conversions with this? Um, not a ton. Um, I feel like people get confused. And also because there's agencies, resource directory. And then I've also had someone recommend that I just make it all free and just make money off ads too. I've had a lot of seg suggestions. Gotcha. And if I click on search egg donors, I'm going to get a similar page. Um, yeah. I know Pat and my recommendation would be to you can you can make it free, but require them to at least register to search the uh, um, the directory. Uh, so register free to search the directory might be a good start. If you're going to keep it paid, um, instead of choose a membership exclamation point, get started today. What you want to do if you're going to ask people to sign up for free or paid, um, you want to reiterate the the benefits um, and what they need to do next. So. This would be um, like get connected with egg donors, right? And then the sub subtitle. This goes back to like the, the that webinar that I shared, the premium webinar in the chat. It covers how to make sure your the content of your site aligns with the actions you want your visitors to complete. So um, you could say select a plan to search the database now. So you've you're telling them what's going to happen, and then you're, you're telling them what to do. Select a plan to search the database now. See the difference between those two? Yep. Um, so th I would update the text. I would consider, if you want to, just having the free registration um, to start. So what happens if I go to resource directory and I click on... So what are these yep. exactly? Egg don't. Those are all members that are um, agencies or resource directory mem members, so fertility businesses. Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, so, I, now. so now I'm a little confused um, of why I don't need to register to find those, but I need to register to find these specific two. If your site is to find these two, I would focus on just focusing on on these two. Um, I, I get the resource directory. It's like ancillary professionals and services and, and people who can help you in this in this field. Um, yeah, my focus would be is maybe try to remove two or three of these links here and okay. simplify the sign up process. Um, what we want to call it is you want to make it as frictionless as possible to get them to register yeah. to get to the content they're looking for. So. Um, I don't think you're far off from it. I think you just maybe, like the homepage is super simple, but once I start trying to search, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, me personally, I'm a little lost. Do you have any feedback, Pat? Yeah, I'm thinking you have a unique opportunity in the sense that in this industry, I me mean, as a user, I would completely understand why you'd want to vet me before I can start browsing the database. A lot of different industries, you would people would be turned off from having to give their email to start searching a database. Uh, the homepage is so warm. It's so welcoming. Uh, I can just really envision your end user. It's exactly the tone that, that I think your end user wants when they come here. Uh, it's beautiful. When I click search egg donors, however, it gets corporate instantly and it's plans and membership levels and I lost that feeling and it's like, oh, this is a business. You're not really trying to help me reach my dreams and this and that. So I think that you've missed an opportunity to translate that initial feeling to a nice clean landing page. And I think we can show her a simple landing page to start with, Jason. Instead of different pricing plans, I would have it about the mission and why you started the website and the importance of helping this community grow and helping uh, you know mothers uh, uh, become mothers. And, and I'm sorry if I'm not using the correct terminology. Uh, I get a feeling of it. Now, the, the, th the thing is, you can tell them that in order for them to access the database, that you, you have a certain protocol that, that you need to follow, and they just need to create an account and verify so that they can start browsing your database. So you're going to really start increasing the amount of emails that you're collecting, taking an approach like this. And then what you can do is you can nurture them once they've signed up. They can receive an email sequence, or you can try to upsell them if there is you'd like to sell to them. Uh, you'll be able to do that at that point. But I would probably recommend going, you're probably getting a lot of people going to the site and yeah. maybe not getting the, the amount of conversions you 
and probably because, like Jason said, it's a little confusing, and you're taking them to tracing pages right after the, the initial visit. Okay, so I have an about us or our story in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, it's under, yeah, under our story, and then so you say that we should probably have like a story. I should have kind of a story in there, and then on top of that, kind of have those steps. Um, yeah, I think. Go ahead, Jason. I, I think they could be separate. Um, your, I, I think our mission would be better than our story for a site like this. Um, the story, I, I understand. Uh, I, I'm just thinking what would resonate better with uh, with this industry is uh, our mission. Our story is, is just as good. Um, yeah, I think you're you're not far off. I would just find ways to make it a little more frictionless um, and a little bit more warm and nurturing through the whole process. Pat brought up a good point. You click on this and now it's all business um, rather than the joy of, of potential. You're, you're essentially a lead gen site for people who um, are looking for egg donors or surrogates. So you need to have forms for them to fill out, whether it's the lead gen form um, that comes with all Brilliant Directory sites um, or it's getting them registered as a free member in order to start searching the directory. But I think the key here is uh, free registration for the end user and having a separate section where the surrogates pay to be listed or whoever the, the paying people are. So you're going to have two different audiences here, the end user who's looking for the services and then the people who are offering the, the eggs and, the, and, and being sur surrogates. Um, so just think about ways to, to make it a little more uh, frictionless and again like register, is that who's registering exactly? Is it the yep. person who's looking for an egg donor or the person who is the egg donor? Um, you, the, just the parents who are looking for egg donors. I have about 2,200 or 2,300 um, egg donors in there right now, uh, profiles that they can search for and search through, and it changes every day. So this is parent, this is parent registration. Regis, how do you spell it? Okay, so this yeah. is parent registration? Um, it's actually for any of them because that's where the agencies would sign up and the businesses would sign up there too. What type of so agencies? Want, uh, the agency is um, the one that has the, um, they're kind of, <laughs> I say I'm like a Zillow for egg donors, so it's almost like a real estate agency. They have the, the egg donors and then I post the profiles for them. I'm kind of just in. Okay, I see. I see what you're saying here. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. Um, I I totally understand. Okay, and this is the resource directory of like all the other people, like the other people who service this industry. Okay, yeah. you might want to get rid of that one. Um, we're gonna want to use the uh, the offset here. So I'll just use Rick's little trick here. Coal, MD, offset. Uh, I don't know. We'll just do three for now. All right. I guess we'll do two. And what you should do is, what, what's the name of these agencies? Providers? Like? Uh, there's agencies. Like egg donor agencies and surrogate agencies. So okay, so egg what, donor what are we, and surrogates. Right, egg donor and surrogates. What? So we need a word that encompasses both of those, like provider agents, agency providers, or? Um, um, Pretty much just called egg donor and surrogate agencies. Um, so the the other one would be other businesses. Right. Okay. Um, we could just put business. We could just put fertility businesses, and I could lump them yes, all together. Yes, fertility agencies. Thank you. Fertility okay. agent. That was the word I was looking for. Fertility agencies or intended parents. So now you have two audiences. We get rid of the third one. Oh automatically this and then if you have the top here it's clear so intended parents I know what lane I'm gonna go in if I come to your site and then the fertility mm -hmm. agencies I know what lane I'm gonna go in so again if you could decide how you want to make this more frictionless uh, to remove the friction from the sign up process but I would get rid of the third option here and it and these are your two audiences here in my opinion and figure out how to get them registered um, as smoothly as possible on your site whether it's free or paid um, and whatnot Yes, this is much, much clearer. All right, let's let's just duplicate. This is what it was before. 
and then this is what it is now. You, it's very easy to pick a lane now. Yes, I okay. agree. All right. Well, I'm glad we figured out fertility agencies. Try to use the word fertility or, you know, around your site. Um, parent registration. The parent registration is, it could just be free sign up and it takes them directly to a free sign up page where they register. It doesn't have to take them to a pricing page like this. So you might want to consider that as well. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I think those are some things you can do on your site. I think you have a great starting point here. You just need to kind of uh, make it a little less complicated. Okay, great. That's really helpful. Thank you. All right. Thank you for sharing your site. Um, so, Pat, what's what's a lesson to be learned from this? Because everything, uh, up, uh, you know, on first look looks all right, but as we kind of clicked around, we noticed that it just didn't it didn't feel smooth. Um, that's also I, I why. Think, yeah. I think the lesson, Jason, is in this case, applying the initial lesson, it would have been to define one persona, right? Who am I solving a problem for? Am I solving a problem for the egg donors? Am I solving a problem for the surrogate mothers, for people looking for egg donors? And have content that supports that. Um, I just quickly Googled because I was just curious. And I'm like, how much, you know, what, what, what are the most common questions people ask about being egg donors? And it's like, is it painful to be an egg donor? Is it dangerous to be an egg donor? How much does an egg donor make? And I was surprised to see it's between $8,000 to $14,000, but it can be painful. It is a long process. It is a big commitment. And I'm thinking, wow, there's so much fascinating content here that would be perfect for that warm landing page that we're talking about. So if I really did a good job understanding what the problems I'm solving for egg donors are, and I had content that supported it, when you click that button, there'd be incredible content. There'd be uh, FAQs, there'd be supporting materials, there'd be an entire funnel where people can get educated and say, wow, these people are the experts when it comes to egg donations. Maybe I want to take a step further, rather than just a pretty homepage click the button and say, wow, they want they want my information right now. I don't know much about them. How much do they know about this industry? Is there a better organization that can handle this? Um, and again, it's a bite size because right now we're trying to cater to many different types of businesses, but we don't have uh, very focused, detailed content that supports any of those in a sales funnel to get them to engage with the website. That's a long-winded answer. but <laughs> Right. Um, well, I see there's some articles here, so it's, she's on the right track. But yeah, you want to bring your best foot forward um, and really ease people's concerns. Um, you want to address people's doubts and fears. And the better you can do that on your website, the more people are going to trust your website because you're providing them with content that um, kind of uh, reduces their emotional worries. So um, yeah, um, this is a good site to share. Uh, thank you, Melanie, for doing that. And let's move on with... Uh, uh, the, we're on number three about designing a simple website. That was a great example. Um, I see that you've done a lot of development on your website. I think it's it's really nice. Now we just have to focus on number two, Melanie, which is the simple navigation and being direct. Um, let's move on to number four here, uh, driving traffic to your site. I know, Pat, you're an expert on driving traffic to your site, not because you're an expert in all fields, but you know how to pivot uh dodge and, and, and duck and, and try different things. Um, can you tell us a little bit about driving traffic to your site and what to do if you're not an expert on this? Sure thing. So there's there's a lot. Of the, the key here is really to be adventurous <laughs> in trying things out and to really have an open mind and say, I'm going to I'm going to try as many things as it takes until I eventually find out what works for my particular industry. Um, just to stay on the, on the last website, and then you had mentioned it, um, right now we're trying to get uh, parents to sign up, but perhaps what I should be doing is I should have a lead gen form, similar like a matchmaking website. Uh, perhaps what would be the most effective for this industry would be for her to drive traffic via Facebook campaign that have parents fill out what they look for in an egg donor ideally or they the or, or the characteristics they look for in a child and perhaps the, the the game of it all the gamification is that her site will match them to egg donors that meet their criteria that could take off maybe there's nothing out there like that taking the approach of a dating site but making it for fraternity frater, uh, for, for her fraternity site i think that that's an example of an a b test where you say you know what going to try this campaign, maybe that's what I do to get the parents engaged, or maybe I get them to subscribe to a newsletter, or maybe I get them to sign up as members. What I need to do is I need to have the meaningful content, 
and I need to say I'm going to dr I'm going to drive traffic to different pages on my websites, and I'm going to try to identify which of these strategies get the most amount of emails because I need to get users on my site. That's that's great. So basically, not being afraid to fail and trying different things, even investing a little bit of money. Not a lot of money, but a little bit of money into mm -hmm. Facebook advertising. There's tons of videos online on how to set up a Facebook ad and, and bring people to your site. Same with Google ads. And Google might not be good for you. F Facebook might be better. It depends if it's lifestyle versus people are like searching keyword in, in, uh, intent. Um, so again, trying different things, trying small budgets, and trying different landing pages or different types of content that will appeal to people. Because um, you could be driving traffic successfully, but it's to a page that people keep leaving right away. So you want to find a combination of how do you drive traffic and how do you drive traffic to the page that's going to resonate the most with those people. And again, that's where you say you have to A-B test like crazy. What does that mean to A-B test like crazy, Pat, when it comes to driving traffic? And why is that important? All right. So A-B test, if you're not A-B testing, then you can never know with certainty that a certain approach is working. Uh, for example, perhaps I say, the we use the same website again, the best way to get parents to sign up on their website is to have a membership level that they can sign up for and become a member of the community. If that's my assumption and I launch the website with that assumption and that's the only thing I ever try with parents because I assume that that's the best way to do it, unless I try different approaches, I can never prove that that theory was correct. Uh, an A-B test would have, be having an open mind and saying, I'm going to have two different strategies for getting parents to sign up. I'm going to have one where they fill out a lead form where they want to be matched with an egg donor. And they're not going to become members. They're going to become a lead in the lead engine. And I'll match them to the egg donors. And I'll see if that works. And I'll see if I can nurture them via newsletters and maybe upsell them or have them uh, join my Facebook group, so on and so forth. And I'll compare that to another approach where it's to get them to sign up for a profile. And they can browse the directory and find their own egg donors. I want to try both of those. That will be my A and B test. And I'll spend $100 on each for a month. Driving traffic, equal amounts of marketing dollars. And at the end of the month, I'm going to see which one was most successful. It's important you set your goal on how you're going to evaluate success. In this case, I would say how many emails I collected in total. And then that's what I would declare my winner for my A-B test. And then I can develop that theory a little further. Got you. So it's about directing people to different pages with subtle changes not drastic ones, so mm -hmm. you can know which subtle changes are performing better. And it could be uh, as simple as the text, kind of how we, we change the title text here. Maybe you test choose your membership compared to what I had written earlier, like get connected with <laughs> fertility experts. And I have a very simple example, incredibly simple, if you want me to share it real, real quick. Yeah, can I pass the controls over to you? Yep. Okay, yep. Let's, let's do it. Here you go. And And... I was mentored by somebody who is fanatical about A-B testing, uh, and he was actually voted one of the 5,000 fastest growing businesses in the United States this year. Uh, I was a, a part of that project when they had their first customer, and they, they're now getting, uh, they're now generating over six million a year. So they're doing really, really well for themselves. And all he does is the smallest of changes. He, he changes background colors of buttons, words, and titles, and, and, and very, very simple, subtle changes. But sometimes, for example, join our premier community. I would like to test that against get your first two customers for free. I think that everybody here can kind of probably guess which would work better. Uh, I'm assuming it would be this one, but it'd be interesting to see if I spend, if I drive 100 people to this page and I drive 100 people to this page, which one performs better? Um, perhaps this one will perform 50 times better than the other one. So then I would declare this one the winner. And then what I could do is I could practice one with the red background and one with an orange background and drive traffic and see if the color impacts the psychology of the consumer. And then I can and I can declare that one a winner. And I'm continually making the winner stronger defending champion. But if you're continually making the winner stronger each month or each week, that's something that eventually becomes a highly optimized landing page. Um, how can I identify which one wins? 
quite simple. What I did is this link right here, all I did was change the title of the landing page and I changed the membership level. So I created two membership levels. If I, op if I click on these two links, you'll notice that the names are different. So I need to understand which one is different, which one is which. This one is the special offer listing and this one is the interior designer contributor listing. So when I look at my membership levels inside the Brilliant Directories platform, I'm gonna know which one is winning based on how many people are, are signing up for that individual membership level. And again, it's a very simple change. All I needed to do was copy the, the landing page and change the link of the membership level form and change whatever item it is I'd like to compare in that A-B test. So small amount of setup, when you're doing an A-B test, just do a subtle change so you know that that's what's responsible for um, the, the being the winner. And then just keep making one or two changes at a time per, per test. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. The most subtle of changes. You can, if the moment that you change more than one thing on a landing page, it's no longer an A-B test because you'll never know which of those two which, items that you changed contributed to the higher conversion rate. I got you. And I love how you have two different membership levels, but I'm assuming you just cloned one so they have the exact same features assigned they to have, them. Yes, correct. So I came here, I went to Actions, and I cloned it, and then I just renamed it the, the clone. Gotcha. So it has exactly the same features. They have the, exactly the same welcome email when they sign up, the same experience, so it's a fair comparison in the A-B testing. Got you. That's, 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 that's genius. That's a really easy way to do it. Um, I see we got Philip has his hand up, and I want to go to Philip here. Um, Philip, uh, did I'll you have... pass it back to you. Thanks, Pat. Hey, Philip, I've unmuted your microphone here. How are you doing? I, I'm doing good. There. Thank you very much. All right. Um, did you have a question about your site or one of these steps that we're talking about here? Yeah, I put my hand up in the one before, but I'm happy with either subject three or four. Whatever you want, it's uh, it's your day today, Philip. Um, I think three. I think yeah, but we're looking at the design of the the website and whether I've um, overdeveloped it and got too much on it. Okay. Um, it it launched about uh, I think mid September or something, so it's new, fairly new, really still. What's the name um, of your site? And the the site is uh, www.teacher.yoga. All right, let's, uh, let's load that up. All right, I love your colors, by the way. Thanks. Okay, so you launched not too long ago, just a few weeks ago, to be honest, and yoga is a great industry. There's always people seeking to find yoga content or to contribute to the yoga content, whether they're instructors or you know, making videos or, or writing articles with tips. Um, so tell us um, how the site's doing for you and where you think you're stuck. Um, okay, how's the site doing? Well, I'm sort of happy. I think we've got people to sign up um, right from the from the beginning, so people are, are joining. Um, I think I should focus more on creating content for users, not teachers. Uh, we've created quite a bit of content for teachers. Um, one of the main missions was to, to and that there is an our story, by the way. So um, if you go to the very top under home, there's a there's an our story. I don't know whether that should be mission now that you've mentioned it. Or, Sto or story like that, is fine. Story story makes it a little more at home in a way. Uh, mission makes it a little more organizational, like if you're an organization. So both work. It just depends it on your audience. Yeah. OK, so. Um, what we what the idea was to list sort of classes um and originally i started with just sort of listing classes but then i found that people put retreats and workshops in the classes section which then made it look really untidy so i decided to we were going to add uh, i was going to add retreats and workshops later on and teacher trainings so i then added them in separate sections and basically i've moved some of the content into the right places um and things like that so it's sort of you know i can't change people people's behavior yeah there's no yoga spaces at the moment there are classes and retreats um classes is probably one of the uh, the, the the better listings but then uh, i mean i've got a, a a support ticket in at the moment because at the moment people can put classes in without dates 
end dates if they've done repeated ones. I saw so therefore, that. they all appear at the top of the listing. I saw that. Uh, yeah, and I just want to make it so that um, they have to put in an end date, otherwise they're sort of um, working the system, so to speak. So, But that's okay. I mean, we can sort that out. Um, so I didn't know whether it had got too much, too messy. Um, there's, a, there's quite a bit of content um, that I've written for yoga teacher marketing, um, trying to attract yoga teachers. Um, and the pricing page, I concentrated on the two at the top. I'm, I'm not really expecting so many people to sign up to premium plans right now because I think they would need more teachers on there and more students um, before they would. But I'm, I mean, I could be mistaken. Uh, I don't really know. It's early days. Got you. Well, first of all, I think you've done an amazing job for just a few weeks of work. Um, you've you've established a lot of sections of your site. Um, what I think is what I think this site is missing is there are a lot of yoga directory sites out there to find yoga instructors, yoga classes, yoga retreats. We've we've seen examples in webinar Wednesdays actually on those. Um, I think you need one more angle that makes your site a little extra special that that provides a unique offering that those other sites might not offer um, and I think that comes with the slogan or motto of your site um, so let, let's let's go into the brainstorming lab for a second um, and Jason can I can I, would I be fair to say that this ties into the first point of our presentation when you're doing this you're trying to answer a need there's a mission there's a reason why this site exists that we have to figure out what yes. what it is you're solving different from the other directories and if that could be in the slogan somehow some way to start it'd be incredibly helpful Ab absolutely you bring up a great point so we're basically going back to step one on this Phil and uh, the reason I want to talk about a slogan or a motto or what the main title on your homepage is going to be is that will help guide you to on where on what the rest of your site will um, so what we want to do is touch on an emotional point, and I'll just come up with one um, quickly, right? Like um, find um, we can we can work on this, but we'll just use the word top rated um, yoga. And again, I know that retreat signed up and everything like that, but let's focus on yoga classes. Um, and again, we want to come up with something emotional to uh, find. We'll just say find peace. Uh, in your or balance right to find balance um, so you would put the slogan directly to um, so, yoga students the end users well your site is to connect from what I understand it says find yoga so I would assume it's for people to find yoga students that want to find sure. yoga yeah, classes yeah. and people that I can kind of um, spend time with to, to find balance in my life or um, mm -hmm. uh, so the so, benefits uh, one of the benefits of yoga for instance would would be useful in the slogan yeah um, so okay. again, you could do like trusted yoga classes to find um, you know balance I'm just coming up with something off the top of my head but you want to this can be your slogan this could be your title here um, and then let's simplify it further why do people do yoga Give me two two reasons people do yoga. I'll, I'll give you one answer: is fitness, right? Fitness and stress. Okay, so to to stress relief, right? And there's those are two different types of yoga classes, right? The intense ones in the hot rooms. I mean, they're both stress relief and they're both fitness, but those those could be the categories people are are searching for because. Um, you know this the yoga space yoga studio and yoga teacher I, I think I would simplify this and teacher tr teacher training school that would be for the yoga and people who are yoga instructors looking for to people who want to become yoga instructors right yeah okay um, I'd probably remove that I'd, I'd have everything geared towards people looking for to the end users to, to the end user so I, I don't know the difference between a space and a studio um, okay. Now the idea again, the yoga space is directed towards the yoga teachers. It's spaces for rent for the yoga teachers to use. And 
And I'm so happy we're, we're going over this, Jason, because we didn't exactly touch on this, but I see this all the time. We always refer to features, right? Don't launch with classifieds and coupons and events and properties. But this is the same as launching with eight features. If you launch with studios and spaces and trainers and and yeah. and, and the courses and uh, providers, suppliers, products, if you launch, that's the same as launching with eight, eight features. Now you need to fill those categories and you need to give a good user experience and we cannot have a singular message. We can't solve the problem for everybody. Yeah. We can solve the problem for one person to start with and build that content. So who are we solving a problem for? What is the niche? What is the focus of the website that we launch with? And then of course, in the second cycle, then we introduce teachers, then we introduce courses. The fifth cycle will, int will introduce studios. That can be how you can grow your brand, but you'll never launch a new member type or target a different industry within your industry until you have the marketing materials to support it. Yeah, no, I hear you. I think what I did was I, we actually launched with just um, uh, yoga studios, yoga teachers, and yoga classes, and that's all. And I think I got overexcited after about three or four weeks and added the rest in. <laughs> so we gotcha. so, need to review that. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking type of classes could be private sessions, um, group group classes. What other type? I know you have all the different types of yoga here. I, I fell into this trap before also. Um, Bikram yoga and mixed and power and uh, vinyasa. So maybe yeah. So that's so, so would you would you put the the types of yoga as a what do you call it a sub sub category rather than a sub category? Yeah, I think you should um, simplify the categories. They can be sub sub categories. Um, I, I don't think you need it on the homepage search. You can simplify. You could just have your top-level category or sub-level category on your homepage. Just have the type of yoga and the location that people are looking for and just have them search. Um, when I created the other features, I did wonder whether I shouldn't have had them as features but just have them all as yoga events or yoga or find yoga, just yoga. Just have it as a category yoga and then have... Uh, a top level, ca uh, sorry, not a top, so, a top level right. category of yoga, a second level category of um, um, it was either a class or a workshop or a treat or a teacher training. And then the actual type is a sub subcategory. Would, would that have been more clear? Yeah, um, that could be more, decision. that could be more clear. You know, on your homepage, I would actually just have the location search, to be honest. And so people put their where find yoga near you. Just put your location, and, and it starts your journey. Um, you know. Ah, nice. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People in yoga. Jason, love. can, can I? I'll, can, I'll, I'll try to simplify that lesson a little bit more, and it's a good rule of thumb. We're talking about top level, sub level, sub sub level category. So my rule of thumb is you start with the location search. When you can, when when you tell somebody, hey, I'm based in. Where are you based? What's your home base? I know it's a global site, but where, where are you launching out of? Where do you have the most members right now? Um, I focused on London. Okay. So if if I can go in and put in a postal code and tell tell different random people, enter a random postal code, and wh whoever I ask that to, they always get, you know, 20, 25 results regardless of the postal code. Then at that point, I say, okay, well, maybe I'm going to expand to a new location. And until you can always guarantee a great result just with the location searches, you shouldn't look into introducing categories. Then you're going to introduce a top-level category when there's so many results that you want to make it easier to filter from the beginning because they're going to get hundreds of results and it's not helpful. So it's really good to start with a simple location search like Jason is saying until it gets out of hand, which is a good problem to have, and then you introduce additional filtering. Okay, thank you. I, I think that's a great idea. Um, why not make it yoga just about London right now, then expand to the UK, then expand to, you know, then you can expand to the world after that. Maybe you want to go t into another country, but that way you can focus your efforts on at least start with the UK. Um, that way you're, again, you're, when you go to pitch potential yoga studios to join or teachers and you say that it's a yoga site in the UK, it's going to be much easier than saying it's a worldwide yoga site. 
Um, and it's also easier for you to market to potential end users because you know you want to target people in the UK. And basically what you're doing, Phil, is you're creating a marketplace. You have a marketplace of end users looking for yoga stuff, and you have the yoga providers who are advertising their services. And when you're building, this is why it's important to build a more niche site, is you're building a marketplace, and it's easier to balance the marketplace, not only to get people to join, but also the end users that you're going to start marketing your site to come to your site. Um, so you want to think about that marketplace and how to make your job easier to balance that marketplace. If you have a thousand professionals in London, but all your end users are in the US, that's an, that's an yeah, unbalanced sure. marketplace. So I think Pat hit it on the nail on the head here is why don't you also add another layer of specificity to the site and also make it just about the UK right now since you're just a few weeks into your site. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and you're going to start ranking in Google better for, for UK uh, yoga classes because your site's going to be super powerful in that. So what you can do is um, you can go to your general settings here and you've put um, industry name and profession name as yoga. You can do UK yoga classes and um, you know, whatever you want, U UK, UK yoga and UK yoga classes. And that adds an extra level of, uh, uh, SEO to your site. So you'll probably rank better for this if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. And like, one last thing, this goes back to creating uh, less friction, right? So when I, when I suggested just have the location search on the homepage, um, that's helping to reduce friction. It's less things for people to fill out. And since your site is just starting out, just tell them to search locations. And why don't you just focus on the UK? So chances are they're going to find people on the other side of that marketplace. Yeah, okay. I got you. All yeah, right. okay. Yeah, I really appreciate the help. Thank you. All right, good, good stuff. Uh, thank you for sharing your site. So, Pat. On the surface, it seems like a very simple site, and everything looks like it's set up perfectly. <laughs> but after clicking around a little bit, it's, and it's no one's fault. Um, it's just about being part of these webinars and being part of the Facebook group and talking these things out. And again, it goes back to A-B testing. Um, but I think for this site, it was going towards the, and we talked about it in the previous webinar, it was going uh, towards being everything for everyone in the yoga industry, retreats, mm -hmm. classes, pe teachers looking for spaces to rent so they can teach their classes. That would be great for a classified sections on this on the site, but that could be released in a phase two. That could be um, here, here's step one is find a need to fill. Number four on this is break up your project into releases. Maybe in another release, once he gets all the teachers listed, um, they might have sub those those are the teachers that might might have free time to sublease some of their spaces and they could post classifieds so they could fill their empty hours throughout the days and the weeks because if I'm renting uh, a studio um, from from if I'm leasing a studio there's times where I might not work on Sunday and I could I could lease out my studio to another instructor on Sundays so, but I need I need the instructors first. Um, uh, you're, you're absolutely you're absolutely right. And a lot of times, if I'm on a consultation call, and like I said, this happens very frequently, I often thank uh, the person on your line, saying, "Okay, thank you. Now I know where you want to be when all of this is done. Where would you like to begin?" <laughs> it's kind of the brainstorm, right? Here's everything we could possibly do. Uh, it's good to do that. It's not even a bad idea if if you want to go through the exercise. Uh, just practicing and putting all the links and thinking of everything your site could do, it's not a bad idea to do that if it's a brainstorming exercise and saying, wow, these are all the things we could be doing. Now that we know what's possible, let's pick one. <laughs> Where are we going to start with all of these? And then let's start removing the sections that we're not going to use, and let's go through those cycles and, and, and start applying that strategy to the one thing, the one problem we're going to solve for the one type of member that we're going to target and the one location we want to start in. Uh, that's right. I think that's a great strategy. List out everything you could possibly do and then choose one. The one that's the, the low-hanging fruit, the one that's going to be easiest to execute and get off the ground. So you could start uh, uh, getting subscribers and members to join your site. Uh, 
exactly. It is not a bad exercise to do what, what, what he did and to know everything that's possible. Your subconscious can do some amazing stuff, uh, connections, networking, opportunities that present themselves. It's not a waste of time to go through the exercising of figuring everything out that's possible. But, but after you've done that is to choose one of them and really focus on that one element. And I like that you took the time to write your story here, having an Our Story or Our Mission page really adds value when people are considering to join your site. So kudos and, and, and good on you for doing that, uh, Phil. Um, Pat, I want to unmute one more person here before we get to, we were on number four. Uh, Brian, I want to unmute you. You've had your hand up for quite a while there, Brian. How you doing, Brian? Yeah, hey, this is actually Ben. I, I logged in under Brian's name. Who's that? Ben? This is Ben. I actually Brian registered and, I, and we're both on the same link. Hey, that, it's just okay. people helping people. Um, so Ben, how can we help you today? Yeah, uh, a couple of questions if you don't mind. Uh, one on just the site. Hi Pat, uh, I know Pat too. Um, that what do you think on it? And my, my site's uh, under construction. I just try to change something, but using scrollers and uh, video on the home page. Using scrollers? What do you mean by scrollers? The content scrollers on a home page. Oh, oh um, yeah, I think if it's done tastefully and you don't um, clutter your home page, um, and when I say clutter, I mean you've, you've lost people on the actions you want them to do. There's just too much, too much, it's, it's information overload. I think uh, explainer videos are helpful. Uh, so the scrollers, you mean like carousels, so people can continuously slide left and right? Yeah, well, vertically up and down. Vertically up and down. I, my response is if it's done tastefully and it adds value to the end user rather than, and it, and it helps rather than confuse them further, um, I'd say it's good. If you're just adding it just to add it and there really isn't any meaningful value that the user is gaining from that additional information, um, my advice is always to remove as much as possible. Okay. Thanks. And then another question I have on driving traffic to your site is that I know there's a email campaign feature on Brilliant Directories, but if you were to use a uh, third party like um, what's it called, Chimpmail or Aweber, um, is there anything you should be aware of as far as you know using that as a method to drive traffic to your site? I th actually, I actually prefer using like Mailchimp or Constant Contact or Aweber. Um, the, I, I would say you you can send newsletters from Brilliant Directories, but it's not the most ro robust functionality. Um, so what I like to do is make a list of members that I want to target. And um, what you can do is you can go to your members here, and if you have the add-on, there's an export member results. So you can search for specific members. So if you wanted to search, uh, you know, UK uh, members. You can search them. That should pull up the country. And you can export them. And then what you can do, Ben, is then import them into a more robust emailing platform like MailChimp and Aweber and do your email marketing from there. Um, and I think you'll, you'll, you'll see good results. You can build out better email templates and things like that. Um, both are good. It just depends what you're more comfortable with using. But definitely emailing and staying in touch with your members is a must, which brings us to uh, number five, follow up with your members. What a, what a great segue there, um, which is emailing your members. Yeah, tough to plan that one better. <laughs> <laughs> um, does that help answer your question, Ben, a little bit? Sure. And is there, when you, when you use those services, I, I, I know that, you know, this is not your core you know, offering, but when you use something like uh, <clears throat> Chipmail or Aweber, um, is there words that if you put in there that might just immediately get you in a spam filter? I mean, is there something that you need to be aware of so it doesn't get spammed out? Yeah, so yes. you want to take that one, Pat? There's quite a quite a few of uh, quite a few words uh, that you can uh, that you want to go through. I'm going to share a link in the in the chat right now. It's really really good. So what it does, this software that I'm about to share with everybody in the chat, and maybe Jason, you can click on it. Um, what it does is it says, "Hey, send me your email to this email." send me the email you're going to send your members and I'm going to give you a spam report. It's going to break it down into the words you use. Is there all caps? Is the word free in there? 
Is there obviously anything about money, investments, buy, sell, um, um, anything that, that's related to that sort of, of industry? Um, obviously, uh, pornographic words will, will get you blacklisted, anything along those lines. There's a whole inventory of them, but also what it's going to do, this tool, is go deeper than that. And, and really give you great analytics on all the things you should be up optimizing on your website. Um, the second thing that this tool cannot do uh, that a lot of people make a mistake with is they buy email lists. That's a big taboo, um, primarily for this reason. If you ever buy an email list, and usually those email lists, uh, they've gotten very advanced with putting in dummy email addresses that are purposely in there. So Gmail and Hotmail, and they're all going to come out, and they release a ton of fake emails that they know have never opted into any lists. And they know if that email ever comes to them, then that person who sent that newsletter, they obviously bought a list illegally. And once your IP, your sender IP starts getting a negative mark, then you're really going to have trouble getting emails landing in people's inboxes. So I think if you, uh, as long as you make sure you have an authentic email list and you didn't purchase it, and then you run through this test, uh, you should be in a really good position to, to have a successful non-spammy email. Great, excellent. And if you're offering something like a free e ebook, what what words would you use if you don't use the word free? You wouldn't use free. It definitely in, in the well. Again, it depends on how many lists. Um, it depends how big your list is. If you've sent from them before, uh, if it's a, if it really depends on a lot of factors. It doesn't mean just because free is in the subject line it won't go through. But that's why they say uh, five ways to, uh, to to retain your customers. Instead of saying download a free ebook in the subject line, that's why the topic is often when you look at your inbox and you analyze what they have as subject lines, they, they very rarely tell you what the action is and they tell you what the topic is specifically to avoid those, those spam filters. But again, this tool will, will lay it all out for you. And just one last question, Pat, is um, does, it, does the spam read your um, subject line and the content of the letter? Does it read both of it? Yes, it does. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. It also, uh, one thing, for example, on, on brilliant directories, you want to make sure that you're always sending from the same domain that your website's on. Uh, you don't want to be representing a domain that you're not actually authorized to be using. So on. there's a lot, a lot of factors. Um, if you, if you put the, if you, whatever email you'd like to test, if you send it to whatever email it generates for you, because it's always a different number. The one that Jason's seeing is different than the one that I'm seeing because we're on different emails. Everyone gets a unique number. If you send it to yours, you'll get a very detailed report, and it's really going to give you all the analytics you need on that. Great. Well, thank you very much for that. Really great. Yeah. You got it. That's what we're here for. Awesome info there, Pat. Yeah, I think a rule of thumb with uh, newsletters is be direct and, and keep it simple. If you're doing... You know, nefarious or, or weird subject lines, it, they, it might not get delivered to the uh, recipient. But with a tool like this, you can be, re, you know, rest assured if your email is uh, too spammy or, or not too spammy. It's always okay to be just a little bit spammy because you really need to yes. get people. You got to do something a little bit just to make sure they open that email. But uh, there's there's a threshold, you know, and, and that a tool like that will let you know when you're way past the threshold. Um, so that brings us to number five here is after you've, let's backtrack a bit, after you've drive traffic to your site, you've designed your site, you write awesome copy for your site, and you found, find out what the needs are of your site, people are going to be joining your site, and you should interact with those people and develop relationships with them. At least we always recommend your first 100 members. So, Pat, what does it mean to develop relationships and what kind of value could someone expect from taking the time to call or, or get personal with the, the people that are joining their site? So the, I really like what's in bold and in red there, and the people I've seen success, succeed the most with an online directory getting started out really lived by this rule. This was taught to me by somebody else. And the first 100 customers or the first members and users you get on your website will be your everything, will most likely define whether or not your, your, your venture will succeed or not, uh, and really investing heavily in these first 100 members, knowing them by name, knowing where they're from, what their interests are, why they joined their website, what problems they have that they'd like your website to solve, what features they'd like for you to develop, uh, what, the, what business they own. You should know everything about your first 100 members. The reason why is in building a relationship like that, you're going to get into the psyche of your end users. Up until people start using your website, 
you're basing everything on personal assumptions. Perhaps you did some market research, perhaps you have uh, you have partners on the project, there's five of you, and you're sharing ideas and you're brainstorming, but everything is an assumption until you get real users using your solution. So you really want to get into their psyche and you want to learn what's missing, what you're doing well, what's what, how you should be targeting them, um, and what new features you should be developing as you're deciding on those next phases. That's that's super advice. And most importantly, when people join your site, you want to make them feel like they're part of a club. And mm -hmm. they just didn't they're they're not a nameless person on your site. They they know who the owner of the site is, how cool is that? They know who the founders of uh you know some of these site examples that we see. You know who the, the founder is of one yoga directory, and that person you can actually talk to them and, and have a, a conversation with them. So number three is invite them to your Facebook group. Now, a lot of you are part of our Brilliant Directories Facebook group. Uh, it's a great way to carry on the conversation, get feedback, help having members help each other. So if you don't have a Facebook group or you're not familiar with it, you can Google on best strategies for launching a Facebook group. It's free, but once you have that group, um, you can build re better relationships, maybe not through phone calls, but through Facebook conversations. You can do surveys and ask your members directly, you know, if they want a certain feature or something needs to be changed. But once you have that Facebook group, it's going to grow over time and people are going to want to join as they see more people are participating in that group. So eventually it'll have a snowball effect. So yes, they're a member on your directory and a great way to add more value to their membership is to allow them to be part of your exclusive group on Facebook where they can ask you questions directly uh, and you can help them. And the more you help them, the more value you're providing um, as, as an organization to your members. So we put number three on a list and number four, which is a little more uh, complex, is creating an onboarding workflow. Um, so if you offer more than just a directory listing, maybe you have a print directory, maybe you're gonna offer marketing services outside of the directory you can create an onboarding workflow that not only introduces you to your new members, but lets them know the next steps that come with their membership. And there are other things we can add to this list uh, related to following up with your members. Um, one thing is that I like is just to show your members something special is writing an, uh, an article on them and uh, maybe showcasing them on your site about their talents and what they've done in the industry. And you're also creating shareable content that way. And that's another way to engage and get their attention beyond just letting them have their directory listing on your site. That's correct. And also, if you call them and you welcome them, you can always surprise them. Keep this in mind, especially if they paid um, they're expecting a return on their investment. So they're going to be uh, very judgmental of what their first couple of months are going to be on your website. And if they paid for a monthly fee or a yearly fee, uh, they're going to be very critical if something goes wrong or they're not getting the traffic they want. So you, for the first 100 members, you could always wow your customers. And you can Google this, examples of wowing your customers, and see how that just leads to more business. So imagine if Jason signed up for my directory and he just paid $59.99 for the year and I called him to personally welcome him, and I shared with him that my goal is to build a, a, a network for him and to help get him more customers, and that he's one of my first 100 members, and I want to give him my highest membership tier for life, and he's never going to pay again, and I, I, I just hope that in return he can really be a part of my community. He can provide me with some good feedback. We can help build this thing together, and hopefully you can maybe give me a couple testimonials. Maybe you can help me connect some people in his community. But I'm going to wow. Wow, Jason, I'm going to give him the best opportunity. I need to stand out from all the other businesses. I need to put a face on my business. I can't deliver the traffic. I can't deliver the metrics. I just launched and he just paid. So either I got to go into overdrive and try to deliver something I'm unlikely to deliver or I can just build a relationship and give him an inside look into my business and saying I'm just starting out and really get him on my side and make him feel like wow he was there at the ground floor and he's a part of something. You know you, you brought up a good point there Pat. A lot of people when they start their directories, um, their membership communities, they start counting the dollars in their head on oh if I get you know 100 members at $20 now I'm at $2,000 a month and and this and that, but instead of, in the early stages, instead of counting the money in your head, you should quantify the value you're giving to your newest members. 
because that there's going to be a return on that investment that you're giving to your first member. So even if they paid, you could definitely surprise them potentially with a lifetime membership to your highest plan. Get them to be advocates and evangelists of your site to talk to their colleagues and turn those members into marketers for you. And that's going to save you in the long run on your marketing dollars. So being kind and extra generous to your first members is an investment in your in your business. So rather than counting the dollars in your head early on, quantify how much value you're giving to your to your early stage members and how much long term value they'll bring to your site being um, part of it, being a valuable asset to your uh, community. And some key takeaways uh, from this. I, this is one of my favorite tips of the week, Pat. It's, it's gone uh, long, but we got some great website examples out of it. I'll just run through these real quick, and then I want to take some questions from the audience. Some key, key takeaways here is don't get stuck on one of the steps for too long. So the only way this thing works is, yes, you can work on designing your site. You can work on driving traffic, but you need to continuously move from step to step and always come back to step one to see if you've identified a new problem um, and new offering that you can offer to, that you can provide to your community. So again, number two here, cycle through the steps for continuous growth. That's the most important thing. Don't get stuck in that design phase and try to keep your design as simple as possible. Testing different strategies is key, whether it's for driving traffic, whether it's for your different landing pages. As long as you keep moving, you're going to find something that sticks. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to not stay static, and we want to, we want to have some kinetic energy and continuously move from idea to idea until we find out what works best for this industry. And again, don't wait for perfection. A lot of people don't launch their sites because they're waiting for everything to be pixel perfect and et cetera, et cetera. Remove things from your website and you can always add and evolve things later. There's no such thing as a perfect website. Any website online today is still being developed and worked on um, and, and refined and fine tuned. So don't wait for perfection. Get your product out to the market as quickly as possible and start getting feedback and subscribers. And again, that ties into number five, your site will evolve over time. And lastly, don't be shy to connect with your members, your first 100 members at least. Add them to your Facebook group. Create a dialogue with them and ask them for their feedback. Give them some perks and bells and whistles for being the, one of the first people to your community and turn them into advocates for your brand. That small investment um, will go a long way. And also their feedback is invaluable because it's giving you an idea of the, the pulse uh, of what, what the industry is asking for. So thank you so much, Pat, for helping us uh, put together this presentation. I think it's highly valuable.